The only way I get my job done is because I use Grammarly. Oh, these are my stickies. Welcome to my Google Calendar. Apps don't solve your problems. Uh, so I use Pipedrive for my prospecting. Look, literally the most used app is your alarm. Literally look at these. What do, you, what do you think about scheduling applications? Okay, so I don't schedule posts because it messes with the reach and just messes with the whole algorithm. And one of the perks of doing it manually is you can give like one last look over everything before it goes out just to make sure that it's perfect. <laughs> what, what's the so question? So what, what is your most used app for work and why? Oh, <laughs> anything. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, but preferably the one we just spoke about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? I was like, we just had a conversation about pipe drive and how she uses it to help her job, and I was like, so what she most use her app for work? And she's like, well, anything. Like, well, it could be anything, but I mean, we did just have a conversation. It's <laughs> from. Uh, so I use Pipedrive for my prospecting and as much as I probably could do my job without it, I'd much rather not because uh, it really helps with efficiency, it just helps me automate everything, track everything that I'm doing, so it just ultimately really helps me do my job and makes it a lot easier. Just TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, they were filming poultry. Just getting you actually working, How mate. are you going to be filming <laughs> the... Are you doing the content session? I'm just, I'm just here for fun. Just here for fun? No, it's all problem. <laughs> yeah. Brother's filming with the SD card here. Yeah. Good job we got five then. You have at least one in your bag. <gasps> is that where the missing one is? It's the one I gave you oh. to take home. Who's got a good input on their most used app for... Look, literally the most used app is your alarm clock. Literally look at these. We're in on 8 a.m. Why? No, this is account management. This is oh, like how you've heard money. it three times oh, today. Really? So it's five minutes. I've literally got, yeah, 12.58, and then I've got one. I've got 11.59, because that was literally getting up for flights when we went away. So, right. And because I just don't like doing it on the hour, because I'm, I'm so stressed that I'm going to miss something because I'm account manager. I've got a, uh, a lucky alarm that's always in my phone, and I've never deleted it. What, that goes off every day? No, no, no. It, it, I've just never, I've just God, never deleted it. Oh, you have the name it's called, Zephany. It's called um, the salmon in the car because um, I bought, I bought. Oh, I think I remember that. When I you bought said a that. salmon, and I don't know whether this is vlog content, but basically, I bought a salmon, <laughs> and nice? then I went to my friend's house, um, and then like I drove there, and then I drove back. Um, and the salmon was in the car, so I need to remind myself that the salmon is in the car, otherwise, obviously, my car's gonna stick a salmon. So, useful alarm. And it's, yeah, it's just hilarious <laughs> out of context. So, got a lucky alarm that I refuse to delete. Yeah. Two microphones, Rode Procasters. We've got two ZV, one setup, massive dome light, little fill light, job done. Simple, easy, effective, space saving, look at this. That's what, six foot maybe? Six foot of space? You don't need that much. Percy, what's the word of the day? The word of the day? Yeah. Um... Uh, I don't know. Neil, <laughs> yeah, word of the day? Uh, that, that's a very good question. Vinny, come back to me on that. <laughs> oh, that one knows the word of the day. Word of the day is leave me alone. That was three words. That was the... <laughs> that was two words. Oh. Um, what can word of the day be? Um, um, Monday, no. That's the day. Watch, watch when I ask my boys. Boys, what's the word of the day? Uh, uh, discombobulated. Say no more. Oh, these are my stickies. 
that I just literally put shit in and then I'll put it onto my Monday board. But these are the like main bits that we can't. Nothing leaves the door without doing that. Welcome to my Google Calendar. So you can see that it's very is OCD. Color coded for pretty much every. So you'll see the blue bits are for clout client tasks, red is for lunch or just any breaks. Bright purple is for like professional development, so whether that's working on my own socials or just doing courses and a professional development chip. And then pink is for meetings. Oh, and did I mention we also have the location of where I'm working each day as well? If your, cal if your calendar's not color coded, what are you doing? Give me two seconds. <laughs> it's not gone great. You're cling film, aren't you? So it stays together. So are you thinking about obviously fronting some cash for me? Because we've talked about personal branding here. My boss is the Harry Hugo joining us. And also uh, Amelia Sordell, founder of Clout. Welcome today. Thanks for having me. So let's find out what they're going to be talking about and cooking today. Talk me through the dish. What have we got? So, bread. <laughs> it might be under there somewhere. If, if we take, if we get. Is that Benadol or something? I know, it's Fat Families. Oh, do do I remember, the yes, show? I do remember that. He was a savage. He was have just a savage. Have you seen the compilation? No. Oh, I'm off to meet a family of blobberheads. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually too bad. It's so, too like, bad. if you go back and watch like um, Super Size versus Super Skinny, it's like you realise that, oh my God. Right, before right. you before you search Fat Families, really. talk to me about Grammarly. I mean, the only way I get my job done is because I use Grammarly. <laughs> but Grammarly could be massively improved. It could. Because sometimes, sometimes it doesn't pick up American versus British spellings. Yeah. And it's really glitchy as well. Like sometimes you'll like friends. write something and it'll be like, oh, do you want it in the middle of this paragraph you've already written? It's like, well, no. So Grammarly sort of shit out. So apps and software wise for video, it's very, very difficult. You can have some of these AI tools that help you with captions, etc. But apps don't solve your problems when it comes to creative, pinpointing of ideas. There are so many apps that will say, put in this 15 minute clip and we can find you the perfect micro content to go along with it. How? It doesn't understand the sentences, the inflections, what you're talking about. It doesn't know whether to start at the start or the end. Nothing beats humans, but we do love apps. So there's so much hype around threads and I actually think the marketing of that platform was really smart. It was like a Beyonce album drop, wasn't it? Like they just literally dropped the app and then the hype around it sort of built itself. Um, but the biggest issue that I have with apps like Threads is the same issue that I had with, with Clubhouse, which is where's the legacy plan? Like, what's where's the difference? Where's the thing that is going to make people want to be on that platform in isolation? And I think Threads, in theory, was a great idea, but it's just another thing that Facebook have done in terms of ripping off another platform and trying to make their own version like Twitter already exists or X already exists so why would anyone want to be on threads clubhouse was a great idea in theory but it only worked because we were all in lockdown if we weren't in a position to not be able to be connecting with people in real life would it have been as big as it was I don't think so and there is obviously a risk factor with all these things right like should you be on these platforms should you not be on these platforms especially when you're trying to build your personal brand to build a company brand online like what platform should you be on and, and should you buy into the, all the hype that surround these new platforms that are blowing up um, I think the obvious answer to me and perhaps the most pragmatic answer I can give you is live, breathe, die by the platforms that your audience currently sit on. I think it's very easy to get caught up in the hype of all these new things that are coming on, like, you know, the metaverse, for example, that blew up and then blew down very quickly. I think you need to focus on the things that are tried and true and also where your audience are already. And don't worry about the things that are sort of hype and demand unless you really believe in your heart after understanding how those platforms work and what the legacy plan for those platforms are, if that's gonna have an impact on your audience or not. If it's, you don't think it's gonna have a long-term impact on your audience, don't bother with them. If you do think it's gonna have a long-term impact with your audience, then do bother with them. Uh, TikTok is a great example of that. I saw very early on that, that was gonna have a big impact on the audience that I was trying to attract, so I went on that platform. If I thought for a second there'd be no longevity with that platform, I wouldn't have gone on it. And the reason why I knew it had longevity was it was giving us something different. It was giving us something new. Threads is not new. 